men are blind to the privilege they enjoy as men. They simply aren't situated in the world of patriarchy in the way that women are. So you can sympathize, but you cannot empathize. And the reality is that if we want to study these kinds of contributions of women's work, it's extremely hard because A, the data just isn't there, and B, women are often relegated to low value add jobs, even though they are high performers. Um, and, uh, and, and therefore, their overall contributions are discounted. From patriarchy to safety concerns to balancing domestic responsibilities with income generation to trying to break through the glass ceiling, women face a number of challenges that are unique to women. So how do you get men to play the role that they need to play in acknowledging, that's step one, acknowledging, and then rectifying and, and working with women to correct these gender equities? So over the last you know, several decades, the onus has been on women, right? It's like you said, like, can we lean in? Can we like raise our voice? Can we like work longer hours? Can we find mentors, find supportive partners. I think we haven't asked the same questions you know, from men. We haven't pinned responsibility on men in their individual capacities, right? So there hasn't been an ask saying that, what can you, you know, in your individual capacity do to kind of change the status quo? You know, if you have 10 square feet of space, you know, at the top, and, you know, technically two people can stand there, but you have a man occupying eight square feet of that space, it's humanly impossible for like anyone to kind of, you know, squeeze in there, right? So you need, you know, you need the man and usually in senior positions, it is the man. You need the man to step aside and say, okay, I will occupy space that's proportional to my thing. I will occupy five square foot at best and then give the remaining five square feet, you know, for a woman to stand and then step up. And I can't begin to kind of emphasize the importance of, um, you know, people in positions of power letting go. But to be honest, women's networks don't have that much influence as men's do, right? So, I have benefited tremendously because the men in senior positions where I've worked have opened up their networks. Focus has to be back on what are you as a man doing, right? What are you, what are you changing in your immediate space, right? With your team and, you know, your house and, you know, your spouse and, you know, your children. How do you make, make men responsible, understand that it's each one of them who has to make this change? This pursuit, human pursuit of gender equality is perhaps the longest running human development and public policy agenda in the history of mankind. And the only way perhaps to fix it is by fixing uh, democracy, uh, democracy and governance. The, the one thing that stands out as an enabler of women's participation in the workforce, particularly in the development sector, for me is flexibility in time and money, not just for women, but also the men. Uh, uh, and also agency and voice for women to speak for themselves. So flexibility in time, uh, in terms of uh, work from home, etc., and taking time off in a far more flexible manner, and also money in terms of, you know, uh, it could be about travel and expenses because of public safety issues, uh, uh, because of, you know, uh, hygiene and sanitation issues, etc. In my view, in the short term, quotas are the way to go forward because that forces people to think and make change. In the longer term, it's gender sensitization and making people aware of the way we are, uh, we, we behave and change. Even women from very privileged backgrounds start at a uh, start at a point which is far behind where a man starts. What we do not have is the culture of uh, participation, of enabling participation, and that really makes uh, our policies defunct. When we look at participation of women in uh, senior management levels, I think we miss the bus because we really, uh, we miss the bus when we uh, start discussing it at the senior management level, rather than making the investments that are required uh, at the very beginning. Why does a woman have to have a long and uh, tedious struggle to reach a senior management position? What is it we do at the, that we should do at the beginning? 
to make sure that women really uh, participate with ease at various levels i think when you see uh, people uh, kids who join the workforce i think we are evenly split right between like men and women and boys and girls who actually join the workforce whether it's corporate india but also in our development sector and i think the dasra study also shows that there are large numbers of women who enter at entry level jobs at entry level positions i think they start dropping off at various stages as you get more and more senior right so the first level of dropout is when they get married the second is when they have kids you know and so on and so forth every time a woman quits whether it's at a junior level or a middle management level can you find out what will it take to retain her every time women leave i don't think we're paying attention to why they leave or even you know it's like instinctively you might ascribe reasons to it but if you look at it over a fair amount of time there will be certain patterns that you will see if we had to build an organization that was much more equal productive saner for everyone concerned and if you you take the needs of women you will create a much more equitable workplace for everyone uh, i agree that representation is not an end in itself that the representation has to eventually become meaningful and therefore it's a you know it's somewhat like it's not a it's not a one shot solution it's not a silver bullet But, but i certainly believe it's a very strong beginning and uh, you have to invest in making that representation and participation more meaningful by having enabling provisions and enabling ecosystems and so on so it's all about this awareness to have these conversations because if we don't have conversations guys like us don't get it donors need to put 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 money where their mouth is put out a model dni policy get the development sector in india to adhere to them by 2030 Point number two: The development sector needs to sharply focus on making gender representation meaningful in local governments. Can we have quotas inside to make sure there's representation at all levels within our organizations? So whether you're a foundation, whether you're a non-profit, whether you're a social business, and the second action point is more individual. Um, I would like all the men to do one hour of unpaid work every day at home. Early investment at various stages, like uh, like Louis said, at the primary education stage. also right when women enter the uh, the workforce uh, one thing that i feel could actively be a past part of the policy is uh, where hr managers actively rehire and employ women after they're coming back from maternity leave quotas 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 as aaron burr in the musical hamilton said hamilton said you got to be in the room where it happens and the second is teach gender gender sensitization right from primary school